I have Lord Falconis on here with me. We're going to be talking about Teal Swan. If you're unfamiliar with who this is, I would call her a YouTube cult leader. Uh, how would you describe her? She is a new age charlatan that has a rabid following. I, I wouldn't, I don't, I would, she's, I wouldn't say that she, it's a direct, her, that her tribe is like a direct cult hierarchy. It's a pretty loose hierarchy, uh, except for her inner circle. So jury's out on that, but she's definitely got some pretty messed up things to say. Mm-hmm. Now, this is one of their tamer videos. I was actually kind of hoping the autism video would win because that's where she says some pretty batshit crazy stuff, but we can write this one up. Yeah, we can work with this. And, uh, you know, we can watch more than just this one, too, eventually. Uh, maybe not today, but we can get to more. And if you're curious, I've covered a lot of her stuff on my main channel, too. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we watch this video and see what she's all about? This is called Cynicism, right? Yes, it's called Cynicism. Okay. Well, it's Cynicism Decoded. So what she's going to try to do in this video is say Cynicism bad, and then she's going to try to blend skepticism into it to make skeptics look bad. I just put the uh, the link to her transcript in the chat if anyone wants to read along with us. Maybe that person's you, who opposes, is. denies, and doubts, who has no faith in human goodness, who is so pessimistic and so skeptical that it seems like they either have no belief in, or maybe even an animosity towards or contempt for pleasure, hope, faith, and positivity. So already we're starting out with the demonization of cynics here. Apparently, according to Teal Swan, we're all a bunch of really bad, negative people who have no no happiness, no hope, no nothing like that, instead of just people that realize that most, most of life and humanity is full of shit. Yeah, I am a cynical person. I admit that I'm a cynic, but I can still have fun. I can still enjoy myself. I'm not a lifeless, soulless person that Teal is gonna paint us out to be. She has like a name for people who disagree with her, her who criticize her, right? Aren't we considered haters? Kind of like yes. the Jehovah's are, Witness apostate. Yes, we are. We are t- all Teal Swan's haters, especially the people who were part of her tribe and then either got ejected from it for daring to question Almighty Teal or people who just left because they didn't really like where she was going. We are all her haters. Uh, cool. Or what is it that Scientology calls people the suppressive people? Yeah, SP, suppressive person yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's really cringy. Oh my god! All right, but I mean right. it, that's just a sign that Teal is not one for criticism. If you look at the ep- first episode of the Deep End, you, she gets pissed off at someone who questions her. Arguments could be made that it's out of context, but um, the evidence seems to suggest that she's not one of her criticism. That's right. Um, There was a documentary about her called The Deep End on Hulu, right? Yep. Yeah. And and at some point, I'm going to be talking about that because all of her cult members right now are doing damage control, and she's trying to rile everybody up into some release the footage campaign to try to get Freeform to release all the the raw footage that they filmed over the last three years. Well, it's not going to help her, I don't think, but... Anyway, all right, let's keep listening if you're ready. Go for it. Society calls this a cynic. I'm not here today to sell you on the concept of positivity. Keep that in mind. It's a really outdated concept, especially just fighting against pessimism with optimism. What I'm here to do today is to make the argument that cynicism is not a character trait. It's a coping mechanism. So what she's going to try to say is that cynicism is some sort of coping mechanism, like projecting and displaced aggression and things like that. I need to add really quickly, Teal Swan is not a psychologist. She has no training in psychology, and to the best of my knowledge, she does not have any form of advanced degree beyond a high school education. She pretends to be, though. Yeah, she claims... Well, she I don't think she's ever claimed to be a therapist. She just likes to pretend that she is because she's all enlightened and all of that right and she comes out with uh, what i've noticed with a lot of this is uh, i think i watched this video with her about uh the law of attraction a while back and she was just adding uh, the most bizarre ideas together and making these claims about how the universe works and like she had any idea how, i mean all of this is fabricated like none of it is real or has any basis in reality whatsoever but she was making these claims as though she knew, as though she had an education in this or something. Like it was an academic claim that the universe has this 
love, attraction, and blah, blah, blah. It was just bizarre stuff. And that's kind of her MO. That's how she goes about doing things and how she suckers people in, I've noticed. Precisely. I mean, the way that she works is she's got a bajillion different YouTube videos out there that are on various different mental health issues. And they're all fairly tame for the most part. But when you start digging deeper, that's when she goes, you start seeing some of the nuttier stuff. And it's when you actually go to her workshop where her, where the real insanity begins. Cause there she knows she's got a target audience. She just, she probably wouldn't have any of her haters around. Cause if she figured out I was coming, cause she knows my actual name, she'd get me kicked out in an immediately. So she can just say essentially whatever the heck she wants. She said some stuff there, like one line, for example, I'm not going to say on this screen because I don't want to risk getting you demonetized or whatever, but <laughs> right. it well, it's okay. Enough. Lay it on me. Go ahead. We'll, we'll take okay. her as long as it's not going to violate uh, Twitch's TOS and I'm okay. Well, the problem is I'm not really that certain if it will or not. All right, type it, type it in. Okay, yeah, that one's pretty bad. Uh, let's see if I can make that a little more friendly. She says that people want to be assaulted in specific ways. Uh, what was the context in that? I guess people so who are... This, so she's at this workshop, and she's describing how she was feeling these... Getting the vibration of these black women in New Jersey... And that apparently they were just living their lives and they were incredibly bored. And apparently they were so bored that some of them were wanting to be hurt in a very horrible way. If you get my drift. That is absolutely unhinged. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, that's probably the worst thing that I have her on record saying. She's also she also said in another one of her workshops that it is the collective wish of every organism on the planet for humanity to disappear i don't think she said outright that humanity should all like die or go extinct just that they should disappear or go away yeah she seems to have this like misplaced assumption that she has secret information that no one else has uh seems she to has me. a quote-unquote connection to the akashic record although Oddly enough, she's trying to downplay all the new age stuff. I guess that doesn't really pander well when you're trying to make yourself out to be a mental health advocate. But there's still video of her with some particularly bizarre new age beliefs. Like in one of them, she claimed to be the incarnation of an Arcturian soul incarnated into humanity in order to experience humanity or be a part of be have their mission to help ascend humanity or something like that. That's a typical new age thing. It's you're all part to you're all supposed to ascend to a new plane of existence and teal was like that andy fellows actually i believe took part in a bite model breakdown on a website about teal swan and if you're curious i can probably link it in the description of this video they put citations with links to the videos and everything it was very very detailed have you seen that i have but it's been a while and i believe in my conversation with it's, it's a i'm under the belief that with andy that i thought they weren't going to be covering teal anymore although that was a couple of years ago and maybe the situation has changed with the release of the deep end i don't think they are i i think it was just about like connecting with me because a clip of us was in the documentary and that was that's i'm, I'm guessing that's what it was about but like i said they never responded uh after that so but anyway are you ready to continue yeah let's keep going to cope is to make a specific alteration, mentally, emotionally, or physically, so that you can manage or adapt to something that's causing you stress. A coping mechanism is a specific procedure, process, or technique which manages or creates adaptation to stress. I'm sorry, but the uh, stock footage is bad in this. I'm just not a fan. Oh, yeah. She's, she <laughs> makes them. She makes some wonderful choices in her videos about stock footage, but here's right. another thing that she'll do. She mixes good reasoning and good information with batshit crazy stuff. Like, most of the stuff on the coping mechanisms and stuff, that's mostly valid. She, of course, doesn't provide a source for it. In fact, with the exception of her video on vaccines, she doesn't ever cite sources in any of her videos other than her own videos. Hang on, there's a siren outside. I'm trying to make it go away. Okay, well, let's all be a vibrational match to the siren disappearing for Telltale, okay? Let's just, okay. We, are now, we are now aligning our manifestations with the siren. And when it disappears, it means that you guys successfully aligned your vibrations to make... See, there it goes. It's gone. See? Just like that. You guys manifested your vibrations, and it's gone. Boom. Yes. Love and light, everybody. 
Namaste. <laughs> God, it's cringy. Okay, I let's legit, keep I going. Legit, I legit hate that word, but yes, please, let's go on. Okay. <laughs> and therefore, it is the opposite of change. No. Because it is to adapt to a stressor rather than to change a situation so that there is no longer a stressor. God, when I saw this, it reminded me. Uh, one more thing about Teal Swan, a, a fun little interesting fact here. Doesn't she say that the gods created her to be beautiful so that sh- people would listen to her message more readily? Is that right? Or do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, she did. And not only did she say that, I believe she also said that she was made to be a white person because white is seen universally as more beautiful. Wow, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Just God. Okay, let's keep listening. (laughs) To understand this more in depth, watch my video titled How to Let Go of a Coping Mechanism. Cynicism is a coping mechanism that most likely saved your life at one time. It's also a coping mechanism that can destroy your life. And it makes other people end up in so much pain that it actually creates a vicious spiral of self-fulfilling prophecy. To understand this pattern of cynicism, we have to go yeah, back to the Here's another thing I don't get that she does, and I hate it. It's, it's, she'll, she'll be talking into the canvas for a second, and then all of a sudden the camera shifts to one that's at an angle to her face for no reason. So it looks as if she's just talking to absolutely nobody, and it just right. makes no sense to me. Yeah, she's had this style for a long time, too, hasn't she? I mean, I've been following Teal yeah. Swan for, like, I don't know, three or four years or so, and... She's been very similar with how she's operated with the camera work and all that stuff, like, the entire time. Doesn't she have, like, uh, 1.5 million subbies or something? Yep, she just recently broke the million subs, and uh, she strung, she danced around with that to sell it in front of all of our faces recently. She is entirely too popular on YouTube and has to be <laughs> taken down a peg. I just want to read what Duke AJ said. When God made Teal, he was like, how many problematic things can I put in one person? Well, the answer to that question, Duke AJ, is yes. She is the absolute worst. Cynicism, we have to go back to the onset of this coping mechanism to begin with. Here comes because the childhood people stuff. are not born cynics and skeptics. When was the last time you met a cynical or skeptical baby? How do you know that, Teal? I mean, babies can't really talk for the first couple, for the first year or so of their life. So, all for as far as you know, that might, that baby might be making all sorts of negative observations on life. Right, that's true. And uh, I, it seems to me what she's saying is people generally want to believe things without evidence. Right? Is that? Am I reading this correctly? And it's like a positive trait. It's a what's the word I'm looking for here? It's like. It's a good thing for people to believe things without evidence or without reason. More or less. I mean, if you're trying to con somebody into into believe into believing whatever you say, then, yeah. I mean, look at Kent Hovind. He's good. He gets it. Everybody, whatever the heck comes out of his mouth, his audience believes hook, line and sinker because they've already have some sort of conditioning to believe it. And they already want to believe him. And nobody's going to question him because they don't like the stuff that. Because they don't like the stuff that he, what is the word? Because they don't like evolution and all the stuff that Kent rails about. Right. So he starts off talking about how evil evolution is and then gives them piss poor reasons to deny it. And then he moves on to things like apricot seeds cure cancer and stuff. And the, the dude's just absolutely harmful. And so is Steel Swan. She does similar things. And it seems to me that she's encouraging people to believe things without evidence here in a similar fashion. More or less, yeah. Because if they do that, then she can literally say whatever the fuck she wants at her freaking workshops and her $5,000 curveball meetings where she doesn't even have a pre-planned plan anything. She just goes in there, quote unquote, feels the vibe of everyone there and then makes shit up as she goes along. Right. I would love to go to one at like just pay for like the most expensive meeting that she has and just go in and listen to what she has to say and then make a video about it. I, she probably wouldn't let me in though. I'd be willing to bet. She's probably in defense mode now that the documentary crew found their way in. And You might have a chance because there's not too much directing. I mean, your name is out there, but you haven't directly attacked her with your real name. Like I have. So she knows my real name. So, well, that sucks. 
eh, it is what it is. I can de- I can deal with it one way or another. By the by, what what's the most expensive event that she holds? She holds like conferences and stuff, right? So there's two things that she does. She has sort of she has completion process training. So the completion process is her little quasi therapy thing that she has no therapy background on whatsoever that she trains people and certifies them in, and then they can go and be certified practitioners of the completion process. And that training is about five thousand dollars. Wow. I think there's also a curveball workshop, which is relatively around the same price, but it's much smaller. And you you actually will get one on one time with Teal Swan. Wow, man, five thousand dollars for one on one time with her. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not even one on one time. It's group. T- it's like small group time with her. Right, right. But you get to meet her at the very least. That's probably what you're yes. paying for more than anything. That's and nuts. right now she's got a she's got one of her online. I mean, her synchronization workshops happening in Los Angeles in a couple of weeks, and. The price for the second best for the second best seats are about one hundred and eleven dollars. But for a, but you can also get the premium spot, which is row center of the workshop, and you get to go to a meet and greet with Teal herself for the low low price of eleven hundred dollars. Jesus Christ, that's insane! Yeah. Where do her followers come up with this kind of money? That is absolutely nuts. I imagine a lot of them are probably deeply in debt. I would believe so. Or That's they go shame. and they try to beg for money. I know one person in particular to get his money for this completion process training, he was posting videos everywhere begging people for money. I actually mm. know of a couple of people when I was at, when I on my sock puppet and teal tribe that would beg for money and then when they got money for things they would say, I manifested this. Uh Teal Tribe, by the by, for anyone who is un- unfamiliar, that's like her uh, her group, that's what they call her Facebook group, is that right? Yes, it used to be a group that was about 20,000 people strong, but then after the BBC did an, did an expose on her, Facebook nuked it, and now they've got a new ver- call- They've got a new group called the Tribe Teal Swan Fan Group. It's got about 2,500 people in it, so not f- at the full level yet, but I'm sure it's still climbing. Significantly smaller, wow, interesting. Yeah, that's the thing about... Um like how these groups work and how Facebook pages work and stuff. YouTube subscribers aren't really a reflection of how many viewers you have or how many regular viewers or how many believers she has in her group. It's not like a million people strong. Jehovah's Witnesses have around eight and a half million. Scientology has somewhere between 50 and 100,000 followers it sounds to me that Teal Swan probably has somewhere in the range of five to 10,000 devoted fans who go to her events and donate money and buy her merchandise and stuff. Do you think that sounds in the ballpark or? I think you're about right there. But I mean, if we leave, if she's left unchecked, her population will just keep growing and growing and growing because there's a lot of people out there that don't have access to mental health care and when they don't have that access and they start looking for help online odds are they're going to wander right into a teal swan video yeah that's one of the big problems the fact that she's right on the face of youtube and she's got you know a, a gigantic youtube channel size gives you credibility on youtube unfortunately shouldn't work that way but she's got over a million subscribers now and that means she's considered to be more credible than others. There should be some kind of accountability on YouTube. I don't know how that would be implemented, but I think there should be, you know. Honestly, she makes them a ton of money. That's true. That's probably why she gets away with it. That's true. If you are cynical, at some point in your life, or many, most likely many, you experienced catastrophic letdown. Catastrophic sudden shocks or disappointments relative to the positive elements of your life. For example, a situation or many that caused a catastrophic blow to your belief in others, hopes, dreams, goals, trust, faith, desires, or expectations. So is she saying that um, if you're cynical, it's going to ruin your life? It sounds like law of attraction type of stuff. Is that it right? It is, or? but she's trying to hide it pretty well. And then the other thing is that she makes it seem like cynicism is always a manifestation of trauma, and it's not necessarily. You can be born with depression because depression is a chemical imbalance inside of your brain, so that can also be a factor too. 
But of course, Teal wouldn't know that because she doesn't have any psychology training. Right, exactly. She just pretends to. Yes. This experience was so psychologically, so emotionally, and maybe even so physically traumatizing to you that you decided that at all costs you had to avoid the vulnerability of positivity. Essentially, you got to that situation and decided that positivity, the state of positivity, put you in such a vulnerable state that you had to buffer yourself against that for all time and eternity, no matter the cost. As a result, I love you that she's to trying use... to demonize cynicism like this. Yeah, exactly. And she seems to be conflating cynicism with skepticism. Um, yeah, she's going to get way tougher into that in a bit. But yeah, right. she's laying seeds for that now. The cost. As a result, you started to use negativity as this way of buffering yourself against the vulnerability in the positive states. But this negativity, other people on the outside perceive to be so painful that it causes them to go into defense and to start to act hostile. That's what defense mode does. It causes you to be hostile, right? Yeah, defense mode, she's describing something as though she has the training. Once again, I just want to keep harping on this and make sure the audience knows she has no psychological training. She doesn't know anything about this defense mode thing. And a lot of the ideas that she has about this stuff are built upon her new age, wooey, pseudo psychological ideas on what it is and how it operates. It's not based in science in any way, right? Exactly. She has this weird obsession with Carl Jung. Uh, Carl Jung is this old psychologist from the time of Freud. They were both around about the same time frame, roughly, um, except Carl Jung, he, you know, he was one of the fathers of psychology. But to be perfectly honest, Carl Jung and Freud, pretty much everything that they've talked about has been debunked in psychology nowadays. It it really has nothing to do with reality. It's just that they gave legitimacy to the field of psychology in general. Uh, that's why they're called the fathers of psychology. But everything that Carl Jung talked about, just about, is debunked and discredited now. But she talks about it like he's a god, like he came up with all these great ideas, and she borrows ideas from him that were nonsense then, honestly, and they're nonsense now in large part. Exactly. Now, arguably speaking, yes, Carl Jung laid the ground, a lot of groundwork for modern psychology, but a lot of his theories are now outdated and a lot are really, really dangerous. But unfortunately, New Wagers in general seem to have appropriated all of his work, especially shadow work, and now they throw that in as if it's some miraculous thing. A lot of Teal Swan's completion product and process is based off of shadow work. Yeah, that's true. Um Carl Jung came up with the idea of the shadow self. Uh, we talked about it when I was in psychology classes. Unlike Teal Swan, I do have a little bit of psychology training, not much. But yeah, the whole idea of shadow work, it's all nonsense that she's built up. It kind of extra psychological ideas that she's giving us here. That it's outside of psychology. Carl Jung is also famous for believing... Oh, God, what was it? Something like... Humans could ascend to a higher level by adding two chromosomes to our DNA instead of having 44 plus the two sex chromosomes, we could have 46 and two, which is what the tool song is based on. The ideas from Carl Jung. And we could achieve that by putting crystals in these towers across the world. I mean, this is real stuff. Carl Jung believed uh, completely unhinged from reality, not true in any way shape or form and she is picking up on the ideas that he had so if you research the shadow self as she talks about it you will find some basis for it in modern psychology but she takes it completely off the rails it's nonsense anyway yeah all right but, and of course she doesn't bother to psych Carl young either so right and that hostility further reinforced your belief that you had to buffer yourself which makes them even more hostile, which reinforces your cynical behavior, which makes them more hostile, which reinforces your cynicism. And this is the spiral that just keeps on going. And we could consider self-fulfilling prophecy. It is ultimately your right to remain cynical towards the world. In fact, you have every excuse to be. The reality is 
there's no reason, given your life experience, for you to feel optimistic. But why then why the hell are you shilling it, Teal? She's mixing up her message here. She's saying cynicism is this bad thing, but it's also totally okay for you to be a cynic. She's contradicting herself. No reason, given your life experience, for you to feel optimistic. There is no reason, given your life experience, to be trusting. So you have all the reason you want in the world to stay cynical. That's completely your choice and actually your right. Artificial serotonin. Her background looks like she forgot to green screen something in. That's actually really funny because in a lot of her older videos, she used heavy green screen. And she would always use these hypnotic backdrops as well. Um, I can't think of a particular video right now, but she had one of like, a fast moving city she's had some with like really psychedelic rainbows and i always got the vibe that she was trying to hypnotize people with that and the way that she would focus her eyes under the camera yeah it really would not surprise me if that was the goal i'm not completely convinced that hypnosis really accomplishes much uh putting people in tra in a trance-like state certainly does through singing and meditation prayer and those backgrounds and things that that certainly does have an effect on people makes them more trusting willing to accept what they're listening to and stuff and that may be what she was going for i'm not super sure um i mean knowing her it probably was what she was going for. I'd be willing to bet. Probably was. I, I bet she would try to hypnotize people. Hypnotherapy is a thing with New Agers. Yeah. It's woo, but it's new. it works for New it, New Agers. Use it. She's like that cat that has a PhD in hypnosis studies. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Except she doesn't have a PhD in that even. I mean, yeah. she doesn't have anything in relevant fields. Is that right? Nope. To the not to the best of my knowledge. All she has is a high school education. The thing is, is that the state of being may just be preventing you from the very life of well-being that you are meant to come here to live. Uh, this is getting into the law of attraction in large part, it seems like. Uh, if you're putting negativity into the world, then you're going to get negativity back or whatever, right? Something like that, yeah. She actually has a vi one of the videos that I first proposed to you is a video that she did called F The Law of Attraction, where she essentially is all like, uh, yeah, people don't like the law of attraction, and eventually it's going to be replaced by something else. But let me talk about the law of attraction anyway. And also, here's karma for no apparent reason whatsoever. I actually just did a video on this. The second part of that video is coming out tomorrow at 6 p.m. on my channel, in case anyone is interested. I'll put a link to it in uh, the description, too, if anyone wants to see it. Living in a constant state of pessimism and letdown is not really living. It's also a coping mechanism, much like positive bypassing. Smoking, cutting, gambling. Uh, positive bypassing. Isn't that some psychological term that she came up with? Yes, it is. I think she's probably putting it as making a spin on something that she also uses called spiritual bypassing. I'm not entirely certain of the meaning because it seems like it seems to change every five minutes with her. I'm looking it up right now to see if... Yeah, it's a way of hiding behind your spirituality or spiritual practices. So if you're an asshole, according to Teal, you're spiritually bypassing. Right, there you go. So notice how she's doing this. She's slipping some psychologically sound ideas into this video, and she's slipping her own pseudoscientific ideas in there. She's kind of melding them together. That's how this works, and that's part of the reason why this is so dangerous. Positive bypassing, smoking, cutting, gambling, or suppression, for example. For this reason, if you are interested in letting go of the coping mechanism of cynicism, I've got some suggestions. Oh Number boy. one, be brave enough to see what you're getting out of cynicism. I don't mean this in this obnoxious self helpy way or like, what are you getting out of this horrible behavior? No, I mean yes, like really do. look. Yeah, she is, <laughs> this, that's exactly what's happening. Look at. I mean, she's trying, you... to say, she's trying to say this, and but like, she, that is what she's saying. She's trying to present herself as this self help guru. So that is what she's trying to talk about. But she's trying to be all like, Hey, I'm your friend, and I just have these suggestions that I totally didn't read out of some random self-help book. Right. Maybe she doesn't want people to, like, view her as, like, a self-help person because she realizes how cringy that is, but that is exactly what's happening right now. Precisely. How is it benefiting you? Because it definitely is, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Is it true that it's causing you pain? Is it true it's ruining your life? Yes. But it's also benefiting you somehow. What is that way? When you feel hurt and afraid and disappointed, but you can't face those emotions directly, you turn against the world and begin to push things away. 
We use cynicism to make sure we never ever get our hopes up only to be let down again. Essentially, we disappoint ourselves before the world can ever do it for us. This but cynicism... Picture. This stock footage is the absolute worst, dude. I, why <laughs> would she use all of this garbage? It's terrible. Although I'm a big fan of the beard. I like the beard here. Not the glasses, but the beard. Yeah, but the video is just cringe. Uh, my is. instincts were telling me to run right now. Your instincts would be dead right. The first article I ever watched of Teal Swan, I just stood there for, I just sat there with my jaw dropped for like five minutes wondering how in fuck anyone could ever say anything like that. And at the time, I didn't know who she was. So I thought she was just some other random law of attraction person. And I'm all like, you know, because what she said, she has an article called Teal Swan, the law of attraction and child abuse. And she essentially says that we choose to be abused or traumatized before we are incarnated into our lives. So we choose to undergo abuse before we are born. And I just remember after like getting my senses together, after he reading that insanity and I le I see her name and I'm all like, you know, only a person with a name as crunchy as Teal Swan could come up with something that batshit insane. Yeah, this is absolute cringe just from beginning yeah. to end. But cynicism paints the lens you see the world through dark, and it also separates you from genuine awareness. Whenever you have an antagonistic perspective about something that someone else feels positive about, or whenever you want to deny or doubt or feel pessimism creeping in, stop caring about whether you're right or wrong. Guess what? You might be either. You might be very right. You also might be wrong. It doesn't matter. Whether you're right or wrong shouldn't stop you from being able to step back and ask yourself, all right. In this situation, how is this pessimism? How is my, yeah, right, that's not going to happen actually serving me? Well, there's a number of things that it can help you against. I mean, a healthy amount of pessimism is more is needed in a world like this, where you deal with people who are trying to con you out of money, trying to pill for you, or trying to sell themselves as quasi-therapists. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. it, is it any wonder that any, that somebody like Teal Swan who is trying to pretend to be a therapist to extract money from gullible suckers, wants people to drop the cynicism and or skepticism. Is it any surprise that she would endorse a position like this? It's ridiculous. Precisely. It's, it, I mean, Steve Pavlina was like this too. He was my introduction to the law of attraction. And at one point, he was decrying skepticism, saying that you have to be skeptical skeptical about your own skepticism and then be skeptical about that or you could just shut up and just believe in the law of attraction or whatever the heck that he's trying to shill so were you like uh into new age before is that what it was you were yep. a new ager yep or? i was i used to believe in spirit guides i was a tarot reader i was all of these things and then one one year and then one year, just a whole bunch of crap happened, and no matter how much I tried to struggle with it, I couldn't get, get any good questions, and that's when I realized it likely was all a bunch of crap. Did you ever I, believe I, in I, Teal Swan? Or? No, um, I was never a tealer. She actually came on the scene about two years after I, bro after I stopped calling myself a believer in the New Age stuff. So how long that's ago cool. was that when you kind of walked away from all of it? 2009, 2010-ish. Wow, interesting. That's roughly the same time I left Jehovah's Witnesses. That's pretty crazy. Nice. Yep. Yeah, it was the law of attraction that did it all in for me, which is why I hate it so much. Right. That's fascinating stuff, man. Yep. All right, let's uh, let me switch screens back and keep listening. What happened actually serving me? What is it protecting me from? How is it keeping me safe in this specific situation? For example, let's say that you sit down to dinner with a friend and they're like, you know what? I feel like this next year is going to be great. And you can feel yourself going, this person is an optimistic idiot. Notice yourself having that reaction and really think about it. All right. What does believing that this person is an idiot and believing that next year is going to be crappy do for me? Note that those are completely different choices to think about. I could say if someone tells me they think next year is going to be great, I could disagree. I could disagree with them without saying that they're a deluded idiot. So why is she trying to blend them both into the same thing? Right. False dichotomy. Um, mm -hmm. Really interesting how she approaches things and how she views things. It, it seems to me. Exactly. Like she's trying to mix it to make it all sound like every once again, cynics are all evil people. 
Right. And it's an unreasonable position by default. It is. And and again, this is getting heavily into like the law of attraction stuff. It seems to me that like this video about cynicism and the law of attraction are closely linked to each other. Well, positivity is always linked with the law of attraction because when you think negative thoughts, you attract negative things because per the law of attraction. And when you're positive, you always attract positive things. And when you're trying to think positive things and bad things happen to you, it's somehow your fault because there's some fragment of your mind, in, at least according to Teal Swan, there's a fragment of you that's being negative and attracting these negative things. To more simple law of attraction practitioners, it's just some part of you that's not visualizing or being grateful or not being generous or some other thing like that that could be really easily vagued out. Right. Okay, let's keep listening. What is it preventing me from experiencing? How is this keeping me safe? Two, you're going to have to see yourself as a scapegoater. Now, this should be extremely painful for you. Why? Because most people who turn into skeptics were actually scapegoats in their family dynamics. Citation needed, yeah. Because most people who turn into skeptics were actually scapegoats in their family dynamics. And you know how painful that was to always be made the problem even when you weren't the problem. So what she's trying to say is we need to be the scapegoater even though... Well, this isn't it's obviously not always true, but we're dealing with Teal Swan here. So in order to be less cynical, we have to do something that was that ab was abusive by our families when we were younger. We have to essentially scapegoat ourselves. That makes literally no sense. Right. Exactly. A lot of what she says makes absolutely no sense. But she says it with an authoritative voice as though she knows what she's talking about and people actually buy it it is truly sad it is i mean and and i've actually in teal tribe there's a lot of people that there's a lot of her supporters that look at us and think that we we look at them and think that they're stupid because they fall into teal swan no teal swan is an excellent manipulator she knows exactly right. how to twist people and how to get to set how to shield herself She's not, you're, they're falling victim to someone who was an expert con artist. Right, exactly. And you and I fell to, you know, expert con artists too. Like we, nearly everybody in my audience has fallen for expert con artists to some degree. It's just, were those expert con artists, you know, your Methodist pastor or was it Jehovah's Witnesses or, I mean, it just depends on where you came from. But we've all fallen victim to this stuff and found our way out in large part. That's the difference, and we want to help people find their way out. We don't think they're stupid. I mean, in the, in, I mean, the main difference is a lot of pastors and a lot of New Age groups honestly believe their shit. Jury's out as to whether or not Teal truly believes what she talks about, but she's definitely a lot more malicious than your average Methodist pastor. Really, you think? She's, like, setting... She knows that she's full of it, um... And she's I'd just kind of taking advantage. I, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm willing to bet that she doesn't just that she's she doesn't think she's not. I'm willing to bet that she's not as generous as she's trying to make herself out to be or as benevolent. Interesting. Yeah. OK, that's interesting. Uh, there are some people who I I watch who I think they're completely full of it and they know they're full of it and they're just setting out to deceive people like uh I, I think Kent Hovind is a true believer, but I think a lot of the ideas he espouses, he knows they're nonsense, and he's just trying to convince an audience anyways, despite knowing it's nonsense. I think Teal is a true believer, but I, I think she's spewing nonsense to try to attract people because she knows she can get away with it, like much like Kent Hovind. Okay, which is that's probably, fair enough. Which is, pro which is probably why the two of them are the only ones to have succeeded in infuriating me. I do honestly believe that Teal believes a lot of the stuff that she talks about, but there's a lot of stuff that no that she knows that she can bullshit about. So it's a whole mix of that. One thing before we start back up, Shakespeare, mm -hmm. has she used the whole quantum physics stuff? I think she might have, but she tries to keep that under wraps. I'd have to go looking for a specific, a specific example, because it's not like she throws it everywhere like the secret did. Right, like uh, quantum tunneling and that kind of thing, right? Like or quantum yeah. entanglement well, just and all quant that. Just quantum flapdoodle in general. The whole quantum thing about how we're all a a quantumly aligned to whatever the heck it is they want to shill. Uh, Dan Fairmont six two three. Teal surrounds herself with people who hype her up and reinforce her shitty beliefs about herself. Yeah, she does, and she may also use like kind of slight intimidation to make sure that she only hears good stuff. 
I, I I've been starting to describe her as Donald Trump, with, except female and with a bit more tact than Trump does. Why do I say that you're a scapegoater? Because instead of making the person who let you down the problem, you made the fact that you got your hopes up the problem. You scapegoated positivity. No fucking cynic does that. We don't scapegoat positivity. We are quick enough to know what the cause of something is. Just because we don't think something good is going to happen doesn't mean that we're just going to blame positivity for it. And I mean, I might, I, I kind of have th at points have thought that the fight against Teal Swan was just downright unwinnable. I'm not going to stop fighting. Right, exactly. It's like she's building up a caricature of how she views this whole thing. Um, and, and that's the thing. You have to never stop fighting, no matter how bleak or pointless it feels or looks. Uh, you have to keep going, you know. Uh, we just found a whole bunch of people uh, preparing to attack a pride parade in Idaho, I believe. Doesn't mean that, you know, we stop fighting because it feels unwinnable. We keep fighting, right? Until Yep, keep fighting until you can fight no more. That's right. what I plan on doing. Many cynics do this scapegoating of the positive so as to preserve their relationships with the very people who caused them the trauma in the first place. In other words, it isn't dad that's the problem. It's that I got my hopes up that's the problem. That way I can control not getting hurt again. And she's mixing standard psychology in with the pseudoscience that she's presenting. Yep. So some of that this is, is correct, some of it isn't. That is her MO, and that's actually the MO of a lot of Law of Attraction con artists, that... They mix in the science stuff and then mix in their own crazy beliefs and it somehow becomes more convincing because of it. That's one of the reasons why the secret, sorry, the secret became one of a big bestseller is because something, something, quantum, quantum, it all works because science says so. It's complete nonsense from the ground up. Jehovah's Witnesses do this too. Uh, they have some correct positions on some things and they use those correct positions to lend themselves credibility in other areas it's a standard con artist trick it is and she's in but she's an amazing grifter i have to give her credit for that oh, right God. not something i'd take pride in but okay here we are i guess not having the solution be in dad's hands and still hang out and be close to dad without there being a problem between us and still feel a sense of belonging Getting really real. I mean, deeply into reality about the, what the real problem was and is instead of the scapegoat of the hope or the faith or the optimism or whatever else it is you've been scapegoating. Getting into reality about what the real problem was and is so that you can create real solutions to it. So, what was the real problem relative to things not coming to fruition? Hopes and our expectations not being fulfilled, disappointments and negative trends. So she's saying, uh, what was the real reason things didn't work out? Uh, you're, you're a cynic or you're a skeptic. Why didn't things work out for you? Is that right? Like basically what, what the question is? Well, here? obviously it's because I got my hopes up and I'm all about the hopes and I'm not apparently not able to rationalize at all as to what was the reason something did or did not happen beyond just, oh, I was so hopeful right. and it didn't work out. Right defeater of huns this video is entering ben shapiro levels of straw man that's a good description for her teal swan the ben shapiro of new agers yeah that's not bad <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> good one yeah and scapegoat the optimism scapegoat the positivity scapegoat the hope or the positive expectations three recognize that you set out to prove everything wrong so as to not feel so wrong yourself all right, stop, because this is where she's actually getting to the skeptic bullshit. Apparently, she's going to start going on into how skeptics want to prove everybody is wrong except for them, which obviously is not how skepticism works. But she's going to straw man it and make people think that she's going to conflate the two, basically, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, worse than that, she's going to paint skeptics as people that are just self-centered and self-superior and just want to be right when that's obviously not the case at all. I can definitely be wrong about different things, but as a skeptic, your job is to call out bullshit when you see it, not to think that you're smarter than everybody else. Right, exactly. If you prove everything else wrong, you're not wrong, right? That, that's not strictly true. If you prove everything else wrong, you're not wrong. No, that's incorrect. That's not how anybody views things. It's not how things should be viewed, right? No, 
I mean, but she's trying to make it sound like we want to be right all the time when that's absolutely not the case. Right. I mean, we can call Teal Swan out for being incorrect about things without believing ourselves to be superior and right about everything else. It's just no, nonsense. Because Source knows I'm definitely a screw up. I've definitely said stuff that I know that I later discovered I was wrong and I've corrected myself. Yeah, that's the whole point, right? That's the point of skepticism. Mm hmm. Is to always question you, is to not just question everything around you, but question your own beliefs as well. You have to be skeptical about your own skepticism. That's why you do things like clinical studies. That's why you have corroborating evidence. That's why you talk to other people and get confirmation of things Dex, without trying like to avoid a, cogn a cognitive bias. Sorry. Right. No, you're good. You're right. Uh, I completely agree. Many skeptics feel like in life, other people either made or tend to make everything their fault. So if they prove that the fault lies with other things and people in the external, they don't have to feel that deep down fear that everything's their fault. This is the insecurity that you can't face. Anything outside facing this insecurity is avoidance, and this is the real reason why it doesn't work to argue with a cynic or a... Once again, uh, conflating cynicism and skepticism and trying to use pseudo-psychological terms to make herself sound like she knows what she's talking about. It's nonsense. Exactly. Because she's trying to make skeptics sound bad because obviously a lot of her haters are skeptics. So if she paints this nasty picture of us, that's just going to make it easier for people who follow her to start demonizing us. Right. Exactly. Here we go. Okay. Chan Man 2019 before we start back up. Teal okay. Swan is a piece of shit. She has no idea what she is talking about, and she knows it. She's just doing this MLM scam to make money. I don't know if I can classify it as an MLM, though. What do you think? Um, I, Well, I guess it depends. Uh, does it sell... Um... Does it sell products in a distribution chain that can... Do they do that? Like, it can... She still does sell stuff. I mean, she sells those frequency paintings, but not in any form of MLM structure. She's the sole... She's the sole seller of all that stuff. It's not like she hires out the resales consultants and has them sell her frequency paintings okay. to people. Well, maybe it just seems like an MLM more than others because it has a lot of the same type of, um, like, it, it has the same feel. Like, Young Living is an MLM, and they believe themselves to have a bead on spirituality and, and the, you know, all this secret stuff that you have to come to them to get. Uh, I think their ideology is similar. Teal Swan and Young Living... And they believe that you can get all these weird spiritual benefits from eating these certain products and stuff like that, you know? Um, I think it's an ideological thing more than a structural thing. It is. But I, I wouldn't classify her as an MLM. I'd say she was more of a social or a religious movement than an MLM. Mm, yeah, I, I agree for sure. And you can argue the same of Young Living and other MLMs, but... There's less, but there's more organization to an MLM to, than there is to whatever Teal's doing. Right, agreed. And if you're a cynic or a skeptic, it doesn't work for you to argue with people and for people to argue with you. Why? Because when you do this, it simply reinforces this original wound of your wrong. Four, if you are a cynic, you're going to have to accept a very vulnerable truth about yourself. And that truth about yourself is deeply hidden under all the ways you act towards other people. I mean, all the ways you act are basically used to disguise the truth of you, which is that deep down, your ultimate need is kindness. Your ultimate need is kindness. What does she mean by that? She is so, so she's going to elaborate on it. But what she's essentially saying is that deep down, every cynic and skeptic out there just wants kindness from other people. And then she's going to go on and demonize us and say that, when we always put down people and say that everything is bad and people of course get pissed off about that and walk away as they rightfully would, then we don't get kindness. And it's a self-reinforcement thing because apparently every cynic out there is just an asshole according to Teal Swan. Got it. Okay. That it, Yeah. It's all tying into her other ideologies now. That makes sense. Precisely. Okay. You really want his kindness, but you would never dare reveal this vulnerability or set yourself up to have your hopes dashed again. And so you would never admit to it or ask for kindness directly. I mean, I just have to say, you know, I, I would consider myself skeptical or even cynical to some degree. And I don't view, you know, desiring kindness as a weakness. I'm just saying. 
Yeah, it's kindness is definitely not a weakness. But what she's saying is that deep down, we all want people to be kind to us, but we're so bad. We're so busy being ho- asshole people because we're apparently cynics and cynics are, ba- are jerks that we'll never get kindness. Right. Because law of attraction, middle, 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 mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yep. Even though she's doing a really good job downplaying it here. Yep. If you're a skeptic, you tend to isolate yourself. You tend to push people away and give the impression that you don't really need or want other people. This isn't true. Yeah, I, I completely disagree. I don't think I push yeah, anybody that's away. A, that's another big thing of hers is that you is that if you are an isolator, that's bad. She's got a whole video about it where if you isolate yourself from others, that's unhealthy. And I think one thing in particular she says that's pretty hilarious is that you wouldn't you wouldn't isolate yourself from a potted plant. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, she. Her whole thing is if you like solitude and isolate yourself, that's a bad thing to do. And but which is, of course, downright bullshit. As a cynic, you don't want to be alone any more than anyone else does. It's just that you associate people with pain. You want a relationship that feels good and feels like ease with people who are kind and considerate and who really value you and don't let you down. Here's the thing. Your cynicism, which is this coping mechanism that you developed, it hurts other people. They associate you with pain. And there we get to the nitty gritty of what Teal is trying to do. She's trying to asso- asso- to associate skeptics with something painful. Right. And uh, trying to kind of associate herself and her beliefs with, uh, with something positive. Um, yeah. I, I've got news for you, Teal. I don't think people are the biggest fans of your belief system either. I don't think if I went to a you know a family reunion and started spouting off the nonsense you have to spread people would want to be around me oh my god could you imagine teal swan going to a jehovah's witness meeting oh god instant disfellowship even before you became a member right (laughs) (laughs) right now to be in a relationship with you they have to be willing to be hurt they have to be willing to be kicked they have to be willing to be pricked you're perpetuating the very cycle that hurt you in the first place. So what are people going to do when they're so wounded by you? Because this behavior hurts people. That's what it does. Yeah, they stop it again. Ready. There it is again. Apparently, we're all hurting people by daring to question things. And I'm sure that Teal's probably trying to on at least low-key emphasize that when we go against her teachings and we call them out, that we're hurting people. Exactly. And really the only people that believe that are freaking followers. Yep, exactly. Absolutely unhinged from reality, like all of these beliefs. This person is deeply disturbing, and it's truly sad that she has as many subscribers and followers and viewers as she does. She has access to this gigantic platform. It's really, really disappointing. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to end it there because it's getting a little bit long now. But if you're interested in seeing more of this, there is a link in the description to... A, a continued version of this video uh the lord falconis who is on here with me continued this uh on his own channel right yep and i will stream the remainder of this video as well uh can you tell me what the time is because i can barely see it 104 p.m uh you mean oh <laughs> i was like okay it's not even your time why did i say that 1007 <laughs> 1007 so i know where to start the video okay great thank you so much it has been a pleasure and an honor to fight her alongside you today